In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For those that are watching by video, our name is Pastor Mike Staub, and we're from Way of New Life Ministries. And you can find us at wayofnewlifeministries.org or Pittsburgh Preacher Man on YouTube. Today we'll be dealing with Psalm 67, begin with verse 1. And we'll also, as a reference, Psalm 23 and Psalm 37. And today Psalm 67 reads, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon the earth thy saving health among all nations may the lord add a blessing to the reading of his precious word Amen. <clears throat> that saving health that face of yours that projects God's goodness your life that projects his peace the confidence that when problems strike or tragedy strikes or situations develop in your life that you're not rattled you're not moved by turmoil by jealousy by hatred that your life standing on a rock exemplifies the God that you serve. The reality of that God that's within your life. That you're not wavering like a feather in the wind by every doctrine or every situation that changes as we live in a, in a world that is un, that's filled with uncertainty. <clears throat> We see it in our political arenas. We see it in our local political arenas. We see it in our education uh, institutions. We see it in our jobs. We see it in our families. As the world tries to creep in, as the world and its ways try to keep in. And on the other side, we serve a living God, a God of righteousness who has not changed from the foundations of the earth. A God who is called a people such as yourself to develop into the goodness and into that abundant life that he's called each of us to live into, to be those witnesses, to exemplify his goodness and his mercy. For goodness, how many times has he got some of us through some most difficult times in our life. When there was no other hope, when everyone has abandoned you and everyone wrote you off, or you fell into a deep hole in life and thought there was no way to get out of it. I know in my own life, I've been through the ringer many different times, whether it be business, whether it be personal, whether it be death, tragedies, and the beautiful part about serving God is the times when I was on my last thread of hope or my last leg, if you would, my last dime in the bank. The beauty of him showing up in our lives. The wonderment of him showing up and, um, and like parting that Red Sea in your life, mm -hmm. that problem, that impossible situation that most nobody realized. The faith and the hope that he places and inspires within our hearts to help us to get through the situation that we're dealing with that seems to be bigger than life itself. And then here comes the Lord walking on those troubled waters of your life. As he lifted Peter, as Peter tried to walk on those troubled waters, and he fell and sank because of unbelief. And here's the Lord as we cry out to him and say, Lord, save me. There's his hand reaching down to us to lift us up out of that water. 
to increase our faith as he speaks to Peter about his faith. Come on, Peter. Oh, ye of little faith, come on. Let me increase that faith in your life. As we read in the scriptures in Psalm 23, and this is part of what he wants us to understand and learn in the days that we live. The Lord is my shepherd. We recently taught about the good shepherd and how he asks us to cast our cares upon him. We talked about how sheep are like people and how we how we so desperately need a shepherd in our lives. Not only to protect us, but to lift us back up again when we fall. To trim the wool around our eyes so we don't go blind in this world. As he shears our hearts and he moves on our hearts to help us to see clearly and we're not clouded in our minds with all these different problems and struggles that we may be wrestling with. We weren't meant to carry all these burdens. Sheep were not meant to carry heavy burdens. You were created on the seventh day to live in a day of rest. And the burdens that you have, you have the grace to carry. And on and on, he speaks to us in his word where he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We're living in a day where he's asking us to turn to him with our needs, to seek him. And yes, it's not like he's gonna drop it out of heaven, but he's gonna open doors in your life, whether it be in your jobs, whether it be in your families, whether it be, I don't know how he's gonna do it, but he, he will find a way to provide for you individually, your family, whatever those needs might be. Recently, I had a family member who was struggling with medical situations. They're in and out of the hospital. They were in there for weeks. And the Lord shines through that situation and brings us light to lead us to a different doctors, different hospitals who can bring out a better result. God's arm is very deep and reaching. His arm is not short, regardless of what our situations might be in our lives or what the needs may be called for. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Sheep need to eat good grass. And without a good shepherd, sheep will eat bad grass. There's a lot in this world that are eating bad grass. They're eating deceit. They're eating uh, worry, fear. They're, they're eating lies, corruption. They're, and it's leading them in the wrong direction. They're leaning and looking to certain situations or things in this world that are not good for them, that are against God's word, and it's causing problems. Where our Lord will lead you to righteousness and truth in your life. They're able to bring you to clear waters. You're able to see clearly that you're able to have health, not only spiritually, but mentally and physically to lead you in the proper ways. He leadeth me beside green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. Do we ever experience those still waters where he, where he brings that stillness in our life because the world would want to have all this turmoil going on where your mind is like a computer just jumping from one thing to the other without having any peace where the Lord the Holy Spirit settles it where Jesus said it's finished he settled it at the cross it's finished and he wants us to live in that finished grace where it's finished we have that hope we have the faith that is true 
because he is true and he is truth and he will lead us in the truth. Whereas we go through life, he's on board in our life and we have that confidence of his presence. And if you're looking by video or if you're here and you never experienced that presence of God, the truth, he's the way, the truth and the life, the reality, the power of God in your life, there's nothing better in this life than to walk in that power, to know that you're walking in the fellowship of God and you're following his lead in your life as he's moving and paving the way for you, as he's moving darkness out of the way. He's moving doubts and fears out of the way. He's opening doors for you to be provided for. That's the living God that we serve that is drawing each of us close to himself, close to his side, that we're not wandering off like a sheep who's leaving the flock trying to do their own thing and running into the wolves and the predators out there that are taking advantage, stealing your peace, stealing your joy, stealing your love, bringing you into depression or oppression, into that fear. God doesn't operate his kingdom in fear. He operates it in love. And if fear is motivating you today, you need to draw close to your good shepherd, to your savior, who is drawing you to himself today with his word, saying, he's saying, I can take care of you. Yes, God's a spirit. How's he gonna do that? How did he take care of the Israelites in the desert? Hundreds of thousands of people in the desert with cattle, and yet he provided for them for 40 years, water, God's arm is not short. How did he keep David, who was running from Saul in the wilderness, who had nothing? How did he take care of Abraham, who was called out of his country and to go into another land? God was waiting for them. A step of faith. And he's calling each of us today. He's saying, don't look to governments. Don't look to institutions. Look to me. He'll use them. He'll use an institution. He'll use a government. <clears throat> I'm, I don't know how he'll do it. He'll open up doors of opportunity for you because he's God. And his arm is not short. And if you're suffering with a medical situation, he may lead you to a good doctor because he uses doctors to bring healing. He may heal you miraculously, which he's done that in my life at times too. Recently, I had my hip replaced. I went to a doctor. I had prayed for a miracle, but I wasn't getting it done that way. But in the past, he has healed me with a miracle with my back where I couldn't lift a garbage bag that I heard it carry in an air conditioner. And I haven't had a back problem since. He healed my headache miraculously and back in 1975. And I haven't had a headache since. I know what it's like to be healed miraculously, to be healed of the flu instantly. But this time he used the medical profession and he has many different ways of dealing with our lives. He'll use other people in our lives to bring us good counsel, to speak through other people to us, or he may speak to you through his word, his written word, his spoken word. He may give you a dream, a vision, these are ways that God works and deals and gets through to us to speak to us. We are all individuals and he knows you. He created you and he knows how to get through to you because he loves you. That's why he came and died and finished. But we have to step into that. Yes, there's something that we have to do. We have to step into it. He wants He's calling us. He'll never force himself on you to believe in him. He'll never force you to pick up his word, to learn of him, to learn of his ways. He won't force you to come to church, to come to communion. He won't force you to be kind to others, to follow his word in your life, to trust him. But oh, the moment that you do, like we read about the patriarchs, those that stepped out in faith and said, you know what? I'm going to trust the Lord in this. I'm going to go, I'm going to trust what he's saying to me. 
And how many times has he proven that to me in my own life? Many of those situations I detail in the book that I just wrote, and it's being published as, it's, as we speak. It's called My Life or My Journey Trust in the Lord. Where he took me through many a trial and tribulation in my life where I learned to trust in him. Not only for myself, but for my families who were going through very difficult times at times. And I had to trust God for them. To trust God for you who come here. Those of you that tithe, I have a spiritual responsibility before God for your well-being. There's many a night or many a time where God has me praying for you because of that responsibility because he loves you and he wants us to love one another and help one another and that goes for my family as well and I'll end with this God has been very faithful to me throughout my life and many of you know the stories and I put them all in that book which I can I could be here all day telling you about the times that God led me, provided for me, or got me through many a serious situation in my life. But the most important thing that happened to me was the love that shed abroad in my heart and the reality of his presence that is for you. The reality of the living God to walk out of this room with him to take him home, to take him to your businesses, to take him when you're going shopping. He wants to be a part of every aspect of your life where he says, cast your cares upon me because he careth for you. To trust in him. Because of that great love that he came, that's why he came. Because he always wanted to have fellowship with his people. And if you're seeking him today, I would encourage you to seek him with all your heart. Because he promises that if you seek him, you'll find him. And he promises not to abandon us. He says, I have you written on, on his hands of his heart, of his hands, engraved in the palms of his hands. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. That kind of God that can do all things. So Lord, we pray today. We pray to look up in these tumultuous times, these times where there's wars and rumors of wars, these times when inflation is a bond, these times when our politicians lie to our face, these times, Lord, where there's lawlessness on our streets, these times where reason and Common understanding or common sense seems to be elusive or eroding away. Where you are the truth, the life, and the way. And you're asking your people to get on board, to get on that ship. Where you have rest for your spirit. Where that war between you and God is settled. Where that war is now at peace where the sin question is answered and you live in that abundant life in that rest, in that peace of God that he has so abundant for each of us to rise you above the things of this world to live with him because his, he always dwells one has always dwelt with his people and he dwells with us in the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And he wants that to be a part of you today. So Lord, we ask to be of an open heart and to receive you and to walk with you and to let our faces shine to, that there is a God, that there's a living God who cares. There's a God that can bring health to your being. And not only that, but bring you eternal life. A place set aside for you in heaven. We lift each of these before you, Lord. 
that you would have your way, that you would touch their lives. For we ask it, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank you all for coming. <clears throat>